Financial Brokerage, and I'm joined this morning by uh, David Corwin, also of Financial Brokerage uh, in our annuity department. And uh, we're going to talk about linked benefit products. So uh, this is really the new way to purchase long-term care insurance. Before we get too far into that, though, uh, a little housekeeping note, all of your lines are muted, so we can cut down on background noise. You do still have the ability to ask questions that can be done at the bottom of the control panel on your right. And uh, if any of you out there are not familiar with financial brokerage, we are a national uh, life insurance, annuity, and long-term care marketing organization. We've been around uh, probably for a couple decades already and uh, work with uh, primarily independent insurance producers all across the country. Uh, so uh, we'll uh, get into it here. Uh, the way this webinar is going to go, it runs about 30 minutes. It's one of our longer ones, so we go over a lot of content. And uh, you'll start out with me uh, giving an overview of uh, the marketplace out here and what these products really are. Uh, David will go into uh, some more details on prospecting as well as details on the annuity-based products. And then uh, I'll come back at the end uh, for a discussion of the different life insurance-based products that are out there. So we'll go ahead and get into it uh, right now. And thank you for joining us this morning. The linked benefit products, I mean, they're essentially a life insurance contract or an annuity contract that has a long-term care benefit attached to it. And uh, really a, a area of tremendous growth in the insurance industry right now. Now, why is that? Well, you know, there's a huge need out there. In fact, the high costs of extended care really represent the greatest threat to your client's assets uh, in retirement uh, should they become ill or frail as they get older. And it uh, costs a lot of money. And In fact, uh, these numbers were taken from uh, about three years ago now. I'm sure they're much higher at this point in time. But uh, if a loved one needs care in a, uh, a facility, a nursing home, you know, average uh, cost is about $81,000. It might be near 100000 right now. Uh, assisted living, you can get by with a little less money, about half the cost. Uh, it's still a healthy amount. Again, it's probably up to 50000 now. And uh, if a person chooses uh, home health care instead, uh, it costs about the same as assisted living, but that's only for 40 hours of care. That's a normal work week. That means a loved one is handling uh, uh, the care uh, from 5 p.m. till 9 a.m. the next day and the weekends, or you're paying uh, probably triple or quadruple that amount for 24-hour in-home care. So imagine your client's uh, portfolio, even if they have a million dollars, two million dollars, how long is that money going to last at this sort of a rate and the costs are just going up and up every year? Now, what can we do? Well, we could be Warren Buffett or Bill Gates and not have to worry about that, or we can purchase some sort of long-term care insurance. And traditionally, people have purchased a long-term care policy to take care of that. And you know what? That still works in a lot of situations. Uh, that's still a good product out there, but there are a lot of things happening in the marketplace that uh, are giving, giving rise to giving your clients some additional options out there. Over the past decade or more, we've seen traditional long-term care sales decrease. We've seen premiums increase, not only for new policies, but for enforced policies. And that doesn't do a whole lot to help the perception of, of that product being uh, a good solution for folks' needs. Uh, we've seen a lot of carriers exit the market. Uh, there's probably two, three major carriers in the long-term care market right now, and they are uh, bearing the brunt of all the claims. And the claims have been uh, for a longer duration and for a much higher cost than those companies ever anticipated. So what can we do? I mean, long-term care insurance is still a viable option, but there are a lot of reasons that uh, people want to take a look at something else. So that's why we've seen these linked benefit products uh, sales just go through the roof in uh, the past few years. In fact, here's some figures that come from LIMRA. And uh, these updated through uh, 2013. Uh, I would imagine the figures are even higher here for the last, uh, uh, well, for 2014. Uh, but we can see here way back in 2006, that's nine years ago now, uh, linked benefit premiums only accounted for not quite uh, four million dollars, and uh, in 2013 we saw about 2.6 billion dollars in linked benefit sales across the country. Now Limer also tells us that uh, about uh, 
25% of these sales have been in the, uh, the single premium market, and the other 75% have been in the, the multiple uh, uh, premium marketplace. Now, there are two important guarantees associated with these linked benefit products that are really driving these sales, uh, particularly from the, from the life insurance end of things, but also on the annuity contracts. And uh, whenever I ask somebody, you know, what was the reason your client wanted this sort of a product or what attracted them to this, uh, the answer is one or both of these that you see on the screen. One is that the premium will never change. Traditional long-term care is a health insurance-based product. The company reserves the right to raise the prices on existing policyholders. Uh, it's not a matter of if they're going to do it. It's just a matter of when, and uh, typically clients don't like that. That's not a good conversation to have with them. And a lot of times people, unfortunately, end up just dropping the policy. Uh, it doesn't help to doesn't give long-term care insurance a good name when a, a carrier does that. Uh, so with these linked benefit products, the client has a guarantee that their premium will never change. They've either paid for it with a single premium uh, that gives them a guarantee, or the product is a no-lapse guarantee, universal life contract, or a whole life contract, and the premium is guaranteed to stay exactly the same uh, for the entire life of the contract. The other important guarantee driving sales is that the client knows a benefit is going to be paid out no matter what. A uh, common objection to traditional long-term care, a uh, client will say, well, what if I pay all this money and I never need to use it? I die in my sleep, I die in a car accident or, or whatever. Now, this doesn't seem to be a problem for them when it comes to their homeowner's insurance. Uh, they never tell their, uh, their property casualty agent, well, why am I buying this homeowner's insurance? What if my house never burns down and never gets... Uh, sent off to, uh, to Oz with, uh, with Dorothy in a tornado, I've wasted my money. But it, it, people never say that with their homeowner's insurance. They do tend to object that way to long-term care. So this gives you a way to counter that objection. If they never use the long-term care benefit, that's great. Their family gets the entire death benefit or uh, the remainder that's in the annuity contract. Now, all these products, whether they're a life insurance product or an annuity product, have some key elements in common. They're all filed under the, the life insurance and annuity heading. They are not uh, filed as uh, purely health insurance products, although they do have some health insurance elements to them, so rates cannot change. Uh, the benefit is accelerated for long-term care expenses. Uh, from a company perspective, they're paying out the death benefit one way or another, and uh, same thing with the, uh, the annuity account. And then the qualifying events are going to be the same on any of these products. You've lost uh, two of six activities of daily living, or you experience severe cognitive impairments such as Alzheimer's. Uh, there are some other details we'll get into, but client qualifies for benefits the same as they would for a traditional long-term care policy for the life or the annuity contract. And uh, at this point in time, I'm going to turn it over to David Corwin, and he'll discuss ways you can find uh, good prospects for these uh, products and uh, give you a good detailed explanation of the annuity-based contracts. Thank you, Brian. And uh, thank you all, all of you out there uh, for joining us on this very exciting you know, topic that, uh, that we're delivering to you. And really our goal in this is really to uh, help you think differently about your clients. And, you know, I, I I know that Brian would probably echo this sentiment is that, you know, maybe just maybe an annuity or a life insurance uh, product isn't always the best uh, solution to your, to your client's needs. And uh, we've also found that a lot of successful agents will, at the, at the conclusion of this, will kind of write down a few of their clients that come to mind as we're talking about these different ideas. So where are the prospects? They're typically found with, you know, clients that are typically ages uh, 50 to 75. Uh, maybe they prefer to self-insure for long-term care. Uh, they have large amounts of lazy money out there, maybe money that's in CDs, money market accounts, uh, things of that nature. Maybe they have concerns about paying for ongoing long-term care premiums. And then the other thing, as Brian mentioned, uh, worried about the traditional long-term care rate increases. I mean, we found that, uh, was it nearly 50% or so uh, rate increases out there. Uh, so I, I, I would wonder why they wouldn't be uh, worried about that. Uh, maybe they're looking for long-term care, uh, maybe looking for additional coverage to the existing long-term care as a safety net. That would be, uh, you know, something that, that I know that uh, clients would look for. Or maybe they need liquidity. Uh, that would be a, another aspect of that uh, that these give you. 
Um, now, where's the money at? You have the business market and the individual market. Uh, in the business market, typically you're looking at deferred compensation recipients, uh, maybe business owners or employees that have received bonuses, and they, they have no idea where to put the money, and this would be a best, uh, a best place to do that, uh, or individuals that have, uh, that have sold a business or maybe even a farm. In the individual market, you're typically looking for life policy holders that have had a return of premium. Maybe they've reached the end of that uh, term period, and, and they want to use that money and, uh, as, as, uh, as a way to, to purchase a uh, length benefit. Uh, annuity holders, uh, again, lazy money. Uh, then you also have permanent life holders who no longer, have the, 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 no longer need the coverage, so you have some cash value in there uh, that uh, you could, could roll into uh, one of these contracts. Uh, types of linked products, as Brian talked about, there are annuity as well as life, and they both come in the two different forms, single premium deferred, flexible premium deferred, and of course on the life, you have single pay and you have multi-pay. Uh, Tax-free, I'm going to leave that up there for, uh, for, uh, for you guys to look at. Uh, that's as a result of that uh, Pension Protection Act in 2006. And uh, prior to that, you know, it became very, very difficult for... Uh, for um, IRS to, to really figure out the taxes on those situations, on those hybrid products. Uh, they had to really you know, separate the long-term care insurance uh, costs and 1099 the individual, if you can use that as a verb, 1099 that individual for those long-term care costs. Well, obviously that was very, very uh, cumbersome for uh, the taxing authorities. So President Bush back in 2006 signed that uh, uh, Pension Protection Act, which really didn't, didn't come into effect until uh, January 1st of 2010. So we're really seeing the effects of that now, but really the Pension Protection Act really just provided, you can read it there, but provided clarification really for the hybrids and, and made a lot of different things that come to light, uh, such as, I mean, it's, uh, I, didn't, I didn't put the slide in there, but just if you can talk about somebody with, uh, you know, a highly, and this really comes into play a lot of the sales that I talk about with a lot of my agents is that if you had somebody with a $100,000 non-qualified annuity, and this typically works best for non-qualified, although there are some qualified or IRA situations as well, but if you had a non-qualified contract of 100000 bucks, in which 50000 is the growth, where ordinarily that will be taxable if you used it for anything, well, if you roll it into a hybrid product due to the Pension Protection Act, all that money would come out tax-free for long-term care. That's the really uh, the key part of that, uh, that uh, a lot of the individuals out there that are selling these things uh, bring to light to, to the client. But you have linked benefit annuity advantages. Uh, so that's different from, the, of course, the life that uh, Brian will be talking about in a little bit. But uh, so the, <clears throat> excuse me, the funding resource clients who own an annuity contract and transfer those funds. That's what I was just talking about with individuals. I say highly appreciated annuity contracts, but any appreciation is going to be taxable, of course, as you know. So anytime you can make that non-taxable, that's a great situation for your client. And uh, inflation protection. You know, most long-term care annuity products provide two, if not three times, the accumulated uh, pool of money for long-term care benefit. And uh, also, most of the annuity products have an inflation protection endorsement. And uh, underwriting on these annuity contracts, because of the fact there's no, not a mortality underwriting in there, they're a little bit there's a little bit easier to qualify for one of these as opposed to a life insurance one. Uh, you have annuity long-term care hybrids. Uh, you have uh, you have state life. Uh, that's uh, they offer annuity care one and annuity care two, and they and they differ. And we'll get to that in a second. And then you also have uh, income rider products. Those are typically on an indexed annuity, American Equity, Fidelity and Guarantee Life, North American, and Genworth. And of course, there's a few more uh, to, 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 to come as the, as the demand for this type of product uh, uh, increases, uh, as does the supply will as well. So you'll see a lot of, a lot of companies come to the market with these type of, type, of, uh, type of contracts. So state life, you have the annuity care one and two. Uh, features are... Uh, they're issued as single or joint life, dollar for dollar benefit. Long-term care typically grows at a higher percentage rate. No medical exams or liberal underwriting, more liberal, under, liberal underwriting than, than a, a life insurance contract would. Uh, option to purchase the rider to extend the benefits for a lifetime. And then the annuity care too actually has a built-in continuation of benefits rider, which makes that, uh, makes that pretty nice. Uh, and State Life just came out with, oh, about four or five months ago, an indexed annuity care product. And uh, that's uh, where you have an indexed annuity, and you, you, you typically on an indexed annuity over time, you're going to have a better rate of return, we hope. And uh, so that will, that will just provide a larger pool of money uh, for your client uh, to, to do that. And that also comes with that option, optional continuation benefits rider. Brand new to the industry, it's the first one of its kind. 
So there you go, possibility of capturing higher rates. Non-qualified or IRA money can be used for this. And it's a nine-year surrender period and also 10% penalty for withdrawal. So you have somebody that could purchase one of these things and also take money out of it for a rainy day, any, any sort of, uh, any sort of uh, situation that, that comes up. The income rider products, now these are the newer, uh, newer, uh, newer uh, uh, cases out there. Uh, you know, you have American Equity. You have uh, the Lifetime Income Benefit Rider. The key product features are, and you'll see this a lot of times. I thought about taking this off of some of these slides, but there's no underwriting on these products. So you had somebody that uh, couldn't qualify uh, health-wise could get one of these. So no underwriting. You have a 6.5% growth rate for 20 years. There are fees associated with these things, and it's uh, 75 basis points. So if you had a $100,000 purchase, you'd figure about 750 or so will come out of that per year. But uh, for most clients, it's worth it to, to just know that. 7% uh, growth rate for 10 years, and that's a fee of 90 basis points. But the thing is that these things double. And uh, you'll see that the contract has to be uh, enforced for two years. And uh, the, the money would double. The, the amount of income coming out would double for a five-year period of time. Uh, and of course, the eligibility, I just kind of talked about that. But they can't, they, of course, it kind of goes without saying, but they cannot be confined at the date of the contract issue. And uh, if they can't perform two out of the six ADLs, that's what triggers that benefit. Fidelity and Guarantee also has one here, and we'll just I'll quickly go through this. Uh, protection package, uh, like the American Equity one, it will, it will double the income payment, uh, but it will pay for home health care, assisted living, and nursing home care. Uh, what's different from that from the other ones is that it, it will pay for home health care. No underwriting, 7% growth rate, and you see that that fee is quite a bit higher. Any time you get north of one, you become a little scared there. That's a, that's a pretty big fee there, but um, it, goes, you know, it goes with the territory because you get a nice little benefit for that. It's uh, one you have to wait three years. Uh, new it's an SB 60 years or older. And like the American Equity one, two out of the six ADLs is required. Genworth, uh, this is a brand new product out there. I would encourage you to talk to me more about this at some other point, and I'll, I'll certainly reach out to you as well. But this one has a, uh, of course, new underwriting growth rate is tied to an index, uh, which you also get 150% participation rate. In other words, you get a 50% rate enhancement on top of whatever you would get. So if you would happen to get a 10% credit, well, they tack on 50% on that, so you end up getting a 15% return added to your income or your long-term care uh, benefit, which was going to double as well with the other ones. Uh, fee on that, <clears throat> fee on that, by the way, is, is a little north of 1% as well, and we'll talk about that at another time as well. But eligibility is uh, just like these other ones. You can't start the income until after the second year. And you have to be confined <clears throat> excuse me, for 30 consecutive days. In, uh, in, a, in a facility. Um, and that concludes my particular time here. And I, and I know that Brian wants to talk more about the life long-term care hybrids. And uh, we'll get to that in a second. Here you go, Brian. All right, thank you, David. Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and give a review of the life insurance-based uh, solutions that are out there. We'll get into the differences among the products. and, and you know, the first way that, that I like to uh, distinguish these products are into the categories of the single pay products and the multi pay products. Now, if um, whenever I encounter someone who is just kind of new to hybrid and linked benefit plans, if they've heard of anything, they've heard of the single pay variety. These are the original hybrid policies that came out um, well, probably about 15 years ago now. And uh, these really appeal to self-insurers, people that have a large sum of money set aside right now uh, for the purpose of paying for long-term care. Uh, this does require a, a decent source of funds. In fact, uh, you know, if you don't have uh, roughly 50000 to put into one of these, uh, it, it really doesn't work. And, and even at that amount, it doesn't work very well. So uh, most of the sales we see are of the multi-pay variety. Uh, it's a little newer model certainly appeals to a broader market. I mean, clients can pay uh, a monthly premium just like they do uh, with their, their traditional life insurance policies or, or LTC policies, and it uh, makes the coverage very affordable for people that don't have that lump sum sitting in the bank. But uh, for those that do, uh, here is an example of how the single pay products work. I happen to run an illustration uh, with uh, Generate Life and their total living coverage. And uh, look at a male age 60, and uh, these are the kind of ratios that you can expect most of the time, whether it's Genworth or some of the other carriers. Uh, this gentleman had $100,000 sitting around, and uh, when uh, asked, you know, 
know, the, the purpose of that money it wasn't uh, for uh, retirement uh, living expenses. It was to uh, pay for an emergency. What emergency could possibly cost $100,000? Well, the need for long-term care. So this client had $100,000, and we were able to give him a lot more money uh, than that uh, for LTC purposes. In fact, uh, plugging it into the illustration, that $100,000 generated just over $200,000 of death benefit. So if he never uh, used the LTC part of it, his family would receive about double the money that he put in. Now, if he did need to use the LTC services, guess what? Now he has quadrupled his money. He's got a pool of about $400,000 to draw from uh, for LTC. And uh, if he can use all of that. He can use part of it. If he uh, you know, uses less than 200000 of it, there would still be some remaining death benefit that would pass to his family. So live, die, or, or quit, uh, he's going to get something. And, and the quitting part of that is something I, I didn't mention uh, earlier. Uh, most of these single-pay products uh, have a very short surrender period or none at all. So if the client wants to exit the contract, uh, they've changed their mind, something better has come on the market, they can do so and they haven't lost any money. Now, the sources for these single-pay products uh, might come from CDs uh, that are uh, really wasting away, earning 0.6% at the bank. As the last I saw in our local newspaper, it's really ridiculous. Um, it should almost be criminal act to be allowed to put money in the bank. But uh, anyway, that's a great source because uh, uh, that money isn't earning anything. Uh, you might tap into an existing life insurance uh, policy a client has uh, if it's uh, really cash rich right now. I'll talk about a way that uh, later on that folks can uh, tap into uh, uh, their retirement accounts. And of course, existing annuities would work as well uh, if that money was not needed uh, for retirement living expenses. And uh, I mentioned earlier, Generous is not the only carrier we have with the single pay product. Uh, we also have Lincoln Financial's Money Guard. That was one of the first ones out there. Uh, okay, Generous modeled their product on uh, uh, the Money Guard. Uh, National Western offers a uh, simplified issue uh, version of that. And then uh, State Life has the asset care products. They're based on a whole life chassis. Uh, clients get uh, uh, some real nice uh, interest returns on that. And uh, they uh, have taken over what I think was uh, probably the very first linked benefit product uh, on the marketplace uh, about 15 years ago. Now, the multi-pay products, these work a little bit differently. I, I tried to run an example that would mimic what we saw earlier with the, uh, the single-pay product. So uh, we're still dealing with a pool of $400,000 available for LTC. But in this example, yeah, most of these multi-pay products, you, you don't have any additional leverage between the death benefit and the LTC benefit. They're usually one and the same. So the death benefit and the LTC amount are exactly the same, $400,000. In this case, this gentleman didn't have $100,000 laying around in the bank earning next to nothing, but he can afford the uh, $6,800 a year premium to pay for the same LTC benefit. And a lot of clients are in that same situation. They can afford the annual or the monthly premium, and they certainly need that protection. And uh, funding sources uh, for these products are, are going to be somewhat similar, existing savings, uh, you know, regular income that the household has coming in. Uh, you might just uh, switch over an existing life policy. Maybe they have an old-fashioned one that doesn't have any sort of a chronic illness or LTC benefit on it, and you can get them the improved model at this point in time. Now, uh, I'm going to go into some of the differences among these uh, life contracts now. And, and these differences really apply whether it's a single pay or a multi-pay type of product. Uh, carriers will typically have one of four ways to pay out the LTC benefit to the client. I think the most common one we see is a uh, having the monthly benefit as a percentage of the face amount. Two percent is, is the most common I've seen out there. Uh, some carriers allow for three, four, or even uh, an amount that is equal to the federal per diem limit uh, every month. Uh, one carrier uh, allows you to specify uh, the exact dollar figure. Uh, some of the carriers, uh, usually those with a chronic illness benefit, uh, will determine the benefit amount at the time of claim. It's based on the client's life expectancy at that point in time and other actuarial factors, and including the time value of money and interest rates at that point in time. Uh, usually, the carriers with the, the less well-defined benefit uh, charge a lot less for the rider, or they charge nothing up front and uh, they collect uh, the fees uh, for that at the time of claim. 
uh, we have a lot of carriers here at Financial Brokerage that offer the uh, the multi-pay products. Uh, you can see a listing there on the screen. I, I think I even forgot one or two out there. Uh, and uh, something that's fairly new uh, right now are uh, the term life contracts. Believe it or not, you can get some form of a chronic illness or LTC benefit on a term contract. Now, none of these allow you to convert that to LTC portion to a permanent plan. So this is really a temporary solution. It's a placeholder. Uh, it's meant for a client that uh, doesn't have the cash flow right now, but uh, there's no reason you can't give them some sort of a benefit. Uh, even if they're not elderly, there's still the chance uh, that they can uh, come down with cancer, they can be in a car crash and, and uh, have a, a need for, uh, for LTC. And, uh, you know, even if they don't, at least now they're used to having that sort of coverage and you've got yourself set up very well for either a traditional LTC sale or a permanent link benefit sale down the road. Now, there are four other differences that uh, really distinguish some of these products uh, from one another, and, and uh, I'm going to go over all of them uh, one by one. Um, one of the differences you'll see with the products out there are in uh, how they, they pay out that benefit. And then we talked about the, the percentage of the face amount, but it, there's another way that, that they can look at the payout. One is uh, using the reimbursement method. That means that the carrier is only going to reimburse the client for actual long-term care expenses incurred. They're going to require uh, billing statements. Uh, there's going to be some accounting there. Maybe they're going to pay the, uh, the provider directly, but uh, that's the reimbursement model. Most of the carriers use uh, what's referred to as the indemnity model. That means if you have, uh, say, a $5,000 a month benefit and you qualify, you're going to receive the full $5,000. You don't have to prove that you had $5,000 of expenses. Uh, it really doesn't matter. They're going to give you the money. Yeah, you could take less if you don't want that full amount, but they're going to give you that, that greater amount. So it gives the client a little more freedom if their policy pays out on an indemnity basis. And uh, another couple of differences with the products uh, involve the tax codes that they're filed under. Um, there are two tax codes that govern these products. One is uh, 7702B, and uh, the products under that tax code are... Uh, officially long-term care riders. They can be marketed as such. The carrier can use those words, long-term care. Uh, they're usually uh, reimbursement products, and on those, that's where you'll see the extension of benefits, where the LTC benefit is potentially greater than the death benefit. It doesn't have to be. It's up to the carrier, but uh, if you see that uh, greater amount there, that one's filed under 7702B. Uh, the more common variety we see is uh, filed under uh, tax code 101G, and these aren't officially long-term care riders. Carriers uh, filing under this tax code cannot use the word long-term care. Uh, you will typically see less restrictions on use of the proceeds. That's where you see the indemnity benefits uh, usually. Uh, the LTC or the chronic illness benefit is limited to just the death benefit amount. You can't have an extra amount there. Uh, the condition must be permanent. Now, th this is probably the big difference right here. Uh, this is, has to do with qualifying for the benefits with the LTC uh, type of rider. Um, you know, the doctors can say that your, your client is expected to get better at some point in time, but right now they've lost their ADLs. If they have a product under 101G, then the doctor has to uh, certify the client as uh, having a permanent condition. That means they don't expect them to get better. And, and there are different schools of thought on this. Um, you know, I, I tend to think that most folks, once they lose those ADLs, they're never going to recover. Uh, Genworth uh, did a study of their own uh, claims for LTC, and I, I think they found the number was actually about 30%. 30% of those folks that went on claim did get better and, and went off of claim for some, some time. But the 101G products typically don't cost as much, so you really get what you pay for here. Uh, they also... Uh, have lower administrative costs on the carrier's end, which uh, is reflected in uh, usually the lower cost to the client. And uh, long-term care, continuing education, if you're familiar with LTC uh, sales, you've taken the uh, continuing ed course in your state, and uh, you don't have to worry about this. Uh, some of these life-based products require you to have that, and some don't. Typically, if uh, someone isn't uh, currently selling traditional LTC, they haven't taken that course, maybe they don't want to. Well, that's okay, because you can use a lot of those carriers to see 
on the right. You might be able to use some of the carriers that are listed on the left, depending on the state that you're in. And uh, pyramid exam. Again, you, uh, you really get what you pay for here. Uh, same thing with life insurance without these riders. If you go through a pyramid exam, you have an opportunity to get a lot more bang for your buck to, to receive a lower rate. Uh, some of the carriers, though, um, have their uh, the products priced more with convenience in mind, and they're not going to put the client through a full uh, paramedical exam. There's no blood work or anything. Uh, they'll just uh, go off of the, the medical history that they can find uh, in, uh, in physical records and online. And we have several carriers here that offer some form of, of a linked benefit product. Uh, I think the last count, that might be about 16 different uh, life insurance carriers out of our uh, total of about 22 right now. So most of them have this. I would imagine in about five years, uh, it's going to be strange to find a carrier that doesn't have some sort of linked benefit product out there. But uh, you know, to wrap this up, uh, you know, we've determined that people need this sort of protection. The high cost of extended care really represent the greatest threat to a person's retirement assets uh, should they become ill or frail as they age. And you know, you're in a position to offer them protection in any form they prefer, whether it's additional LTC, an annuity-based solution, life insurance-based solution, uh, hope and pray type solution. Let's hope you're not doing that. But uh, the linked benefit products in many cases are going to be the answer uh, for the clients that you're getting in front of, again, whether they're annuity or life insurance-based products. And uh, we're going to go ahead and open it up for questions right now. Again, you can type in the um, lower portion of, of your screen right there. <clears throat>